Hello children, today we are going to do chapter number 5 in your Oxford Reading Circle book 4. This is a poem written by Rabindranath Tagore, Paper Boats. Now let me see the hands of children who have ever made a paper boat before. Yes? All of you, very good. All of you have made a paper boat before. Very good. So you know how fun it is to make them and you know float them on some uh, surface of water. Some, uh, I remember when I was small, it wasn't even raining. But I filled a bucket of water and I floated in that bucket. Or you can even fill a tub and then float if it's not raining. But if it's raining, you can just go into the garden and uh, float them, right? So it's much fun. Now I'm going to read this poem for you one time. Please listen. The second time we will all read together. Please pay attention to where we stop, how we pronounce, and what is the mood of the poem. Let's start. Paper Boats by Rabindranath Tagore Day by day I float my paper boats one by one down the running stream. In big black letters I write my name on them and the name of the village where I live. I hope that someone in some strange land will find them and know who I am. I load my little boats with surely flowers from my garden and hope that these blooms of the dawn will be carried safely to land in the night. I launch my paper boats and look up into the sky and see the little clouds seen setting their white bulging sails. I know not what playmate of mine in the sky sends them down the air to race with my boats. When night comes, I bury my face in my arms and dream that my paper boats float on and on under the midnight stars. The fairies of sleep are sailing in them and the land and the lading is their baskets full of dreams. Okay, now shall we all start from the beginning? We will all recite together. We will read it all together now. Let's start. Paper Boats by Rabindranath Tagore We are reading now. So let's read. You can read with me children. Okay, let's start. Paper Boats by Rabindranath Tagore Day by day, I float my paper boats one by one down the running stream. In big black letters, I write my name on them and the name of the village where I live. I hope that someone in some strange land will find them and know who I am. I load my little boats with surely flowers from my garden and hope that these blooms of the dawn will be carried safely to land in the night. I launch my paper boats and look up into the sky and see the little clouds setting their white bulging sails. 
I know not what playmate of mine in the sky sends them down the air to race with my boats. When night comes, I bury my face in my arms and dream that my paper boats float on and on under the midnight stars. The fairies of sleep are sailing in them and lading is their baskets full of dreams. Okay, very good. Now we will go back and try to understand what this poem means. Now this poem is obviously about paper boats and the writer says every day what does he do children? Day by day he floats his paper boats down the running stream. What is a stream? Yes, it's like a river but smaller or bigger than a river. A stream is smaller than a river, yes. And then he says, he does something to his paper boats. What does he do? He writes his name and the name of his village in big black letters. Why do you think he does this? Why, why is there a need of writing your details on these paper boats? All of you answer please. Yes. Yes, very good. He want, he, yes, he hopes that someone in some strange land. What do you mean by a strange land? Is it a land that you already know or not familiar? It's an, yeah, it's an unfamiliar land, a, a land that is not known to the poet, a strange land. Maybe he expects somebody uh, who is totally unknown, a stranger to find the details and get to know who the writer is, right? So, do you think you would do this if you were uh, this person who was floating your uh, boats down the stream. Do you think you would do this? Who, now from this class, who would write your details in the paper boats and send them down the stream so uh, a stranger far, far away can know who you are? Hands up. Who would like to send like that? Oh, why not? Nobody. Why? What's the problem? Tell me your reasons. Yes? What are your reasons for not doing so? Now this, this uh, poet does it every day. So why don't you want to do it at least one day? Tell me. Because? Uh-huh. Ah, very good. You feel uncomfortable. Random people getting to know your name and the village. Now, now I, I know your parents have taught you not to talk to strangers. They have taught you like that, haven't they? Ah, they have. So you are scared to write your name and details in case this person comes finding you, right? Okay. Now seems like the poet is a little bit braver than that. Okay. Now, what are these flowers, children? They are shivli flowers. What are they? Ah, shivli flowers, right. I load my little boats with shivli flowers from my garden. Now, this poet has a tree of shivli in his garden and he plucks these flowers and he loads the little boats with the blooms. And hope that these blooms of the dawn. What do you mean by blooms of the dawn? What is dawn? Now quickly take a dictionary and tell me what do you mean by the dawn? And those who are extra clever tell me what is the opposite of dawn? Sorry? So 
first tell me the meaning please what do you mean by dawn now you should be able to quickly refer to the dictionary and find what is it dawn it's like you open your mouth aw oh, aw oh, sound very good the first appearance of the sun in the the, the first appearance of the light so in the morning just as soon as the sun starts rising that is called the dawn so have you seen these flowers just blooming in the night like that and then they uh, they they are fresh until the morning and when it's the afternoon they start dying have you seen these flowers be uh, doing that yes when do they bloom children when do they bloom at night at night they bloom at night and then until the dawn the flowers are very fresh so that is why as buddhists we offer these flowers in the morning to uh, the lord buddha do we ever offer these in the evening no they have to bloom at midnight right uh, in the night only they bloom and then they stay fresh until the dawn so what is the opposite of dawn dusk what is it children dusk d u s k so what is the meaning of dusk that is the that is yes that is the last rays of the sun for the day yes when the sun starts setting you call it the dusk okay so uh, what is he hoping here why does he fill his boats with these flowers hoping that these blooms of the dawn will be carried safely to land in the night so he thinks when he stuffs the boat with these flowers in the night so they will be safely carried to land early in the morning people can find his flowers fresh why didn't he choose roses oh gardenia oh jasmine for this job why because exactly they bloom in the morning and they die or they wither in the evening so how are you going to send them through the night for the other people to find in the morning you can't so your strangers will find withered flowers ugly flowers so he wanted the stranger to find good flowers fresh ones that's why he is choosing surely flowers very good this class is very good let's go to the next one i launch my paper boats and look up into the sky now after he launches the paper boats he looks up into the sky what does he see children what does he see in the sky the little clouds setting their white bulging sails what do you mean by bulging let's quickly find sorry yes correct swelling outwards yes uh, bulge means like um it expands like swelling swelling sails now when now have you seen a sailboat right with the sails and when when uh, the wind blows the sails are like swollen because the air is pushing the sa uh, sails expanded ones have you seen now it's like this now you have a boat like this and then uh, this is the now let's say this is the sail so when the wind blows from this side have you seen the sail bulging like this swelling towards okay very good all right i know not 
what do you mean by I know not? Now this is poetry. You can use these kind of weird ones. But what, what does it mean? When you say I know not, what do you mean by that? I don't know. I don't know what playmate. Who's a playmate? A friend who plays with you. I don't know what friend of mine in the sky sends them down the air to race with my boats. Now the clouds are racing with his boats. Now from uh, on the stream the boats are racing. In the sky the clouds are racing. Right? They are racing together. See how beautiful, uh, what sort of a beautiful picture that is. Now he thinks there is some friend in the sky who is sending that air, right, the wind, to race with his boats. Now, when night comes, I bury my face in my arms and dream that my paper boats float on and on under the midnight stars. Now even after he is asleep, are the boats going to stop? No, they are going to keep on floating, floating, floating under the midnight stars. Right? And what does he say finally? The fairies of sleep. Ah, sleep fairies. The fairies of sleep are sailing in the paper boats and the lading is their baskets full of dreams. Please check this word. What do you mean by laid? L-A-D-E. Let's see. What do you mean by lading? Yes, the things that you carry. So what do these fairies carry in the paper boats, children? They are carrying what? Baskets. Now what are these baskets full of? Dreams. They are, now these fairies are carrying baskets in the paper boats and the baskets are full of dreams. So in short, what are the sleep fairies uh, Taking there. Dreams. The, the dreams you see at night. The poet says. Those are given by the sleep fairies. Now see this uh, boy or girl. You can imagine. A boy doing this or a girl doing this. It doesn't matter. Right? <laughs> yes. Now in the book there is a picture of a boy. But children. That it can be a girl as well because when we were small, we used to enjoy paper boats as well, right? So he thinks now because he is always thinking about paper boats and he loves it, he does it passionately, he dreams about these things, right? Okay, did you understand the poem? Okay, now we are going to ask questions. Let's see who's going to answer. Right? Okay. Question number one. You can write later if you don't have the time now. Right? It's okay. The most important thing is trying to answer. Question number one. What does the poet write on his paper boats? I need complete answers, not nursery ones. He writes his name and yes, he writes his name and the name of the village where he lives in. Now this is a complete answer. Now like this, please answer completely, okay? Number two, why does he write on his paper boats? Why? He writes his name and village. Why does he do that? Yes, I can hear all the correct answers. 
but the writing part is a bit problematic how would you write the answer for this i know you know the correct answer you told me that he wants somebody else to know who he is so how do you write it see how to take uh, stuff from the question itself he writes on his paper boards because what does he want children he wants someone in some strange land to find them the boats and now my answer also looks incomplete here you can also add uh, he wants someone in some strange land to find them and know about the poet and know about him he wants other people to know his name know his village right okay next one why does the poet load his boat with flowers why doesn't he load the the boats with ants why flowers and why surely flowers yes because they are blooms of dawn yes so why does he uh, load his boat yes it will be carried safely to land see because the blooms would be carried safely to land in the night and the fourth question what is sent by what is sent down by the playmate Yes what is sent down by the playmate Yes little white clouds are sent by the playmate now you might even think is this the wind the poet is talking about but when he goes out he he sees as if the clouds are floating down right The fifth question in what ways are the clouds like the boat yes what is the similarity between these two how are they like how are they alike very good they both yes they both race with the air the boats also race and the clouds also raise that is why they are they are similar they look alike the last question what happens in the poet's dreams yes the what do the sleeping fairies do in his dreams yes the fairies of sleep sail in the paper boats carrying baskets full of dreams that's what he dreams in his dreams also he sees paper boats you can see how how much he likes uh, the paper boats now when you think about something for for a long long time and you are so passionate about something you usually dream those right okay now let's go to exercise b read these lines from the poem then answer the questions can you please read these lines children hope that these blooms of the dawn will be carried safely hmm now please see the first question which blooms is the poet speaking of which blooms what is the type of the flower yes he is speaking of surely blooms yes the second question i'm sorry the number should be number 2 where are the blooms and how did they get there
very good from the poet's garden yes okay i think it's correct now where are the blooms the blooms are plucked from the poet's garden the blooms are plucked from the poet's garden and he loaded them in the boat how did they get there because the the poet himself the poet himself loaded them in the boat that's how the uh, blooms are there in the boats Now let me ask you the third question. How and where does the poet hope the blooms will be carried? There are two questions children. How and where? How will the blooms be carried? You tell me that one first. How? Safely. Very good. How? Safely. Where does where will the blooms be carried? Land. Yes, to to the to land. Now what is the answer? He hopes that the blooms would be carried to land safely. Now see the two types of the two questions. The green one says how. How is it done? How is this action done? So you have an adverb there safely how will the blooms be carried they will be carried safely and the brown one asks where would the blooms be carried where ah uh, the blooms would be carried to land the answer for where is to land very good with that we have finished exercise b as well now let's move on to exercise c what is the difference between the words in each list? Look in the dictionary for help. Now all of you please keep a dictionary in your hands. Let's see the first one. Stream, river, brook, rivulet. Rivulet. Now let's start with the first one. Stream. Quickly find the dictionary definition and tell me please. What do you mean by a stream? Very good. A stream is a small narrow river. It looks like this. This is a stream. Hands of those who have taken a bath or have played in a stream. Yes, that's fun, right? Okay, number two. What is a river, children? You need to find that. Very good. A large natural stream of water flowing in a channel to the sea, a lake or another river. Now a river is a larger stream. The previous one was a small narrow river. When you say a river, it's usually a larger stream. Next one, brook. Brook. What is a brook? Very good. A brook is a small stream. It is a stream and it is even smaller. A brook. This kind of a place is okay for you to wash your feet. Right? It's a very small uh, stream. You can't take a bath here. You can't even think of washing here. Right? Just your feet. A very small stream. Now finally, what is a rivulet? A rivulet is a small stream of water or another liquid. Now here we will see, we will imagine it's water, right? It's another small stream of water. Now you understood the difference between these four, right? The sizes vary. And the next one, 
we have to find paper, cardboard, card and parchment. Who can find and tell me what do you mean by paper? Please find in the dictionary. Paper. What is the dictionary definition? It is a thin material manufactured for people to write things on. Material manufactured in thin sheets from the pulp of wood or other fibrous substances. Now this is a very thin one. Thin. The next one, cardboard. Now what is cardboard children? What do you mean by cardboard? Can't find that in the dictionary. Yes, it's stiff paper. Much thicker than paper. This is thicker than paper. Right, the next one. Card. What is a card? Uh-huh. It's a piece of thick, stiff paper or thin pasteboard. Now you can, uh, you can remember your mother's ATM cards. Now that is also a card. You can remember your birthday cards. Those are cards. Do You can remember your father's pack of cards. Right? So all these are cards. And finally, what do you mean by parchment? Very good. Now, the parchment is made from animal skin. Usually, which animals, children? Usually from sheep or goats. Right? Yes. It is a stiff, flat, thin material made from the prepared skin of an animal. Usually, a sheep or a goat. Okay? Right. Now, let's go to the next one. Load, weight, cargo, burden. What is a load? Correct. Now, load means a heavy or bulky thing that is being carried or is about to be carried. What is weight? A body's relative mass or the quantity of matter contained by it. The heaviness of a person or a thing. Now if you take a person, an animal or an object, these all have the relative mass of the body. Right? Now if, uh, for example, if you take this phone, this phone is considered as its body, right? If I put this on uh, uh, on the scales, it will it will show how many grams, right? So that is the weight. Now, what is a load? It is a bulky thing. It's a heavy thing that you are carrying. But weight is your body's mass, right? What do you mean by cargo? Cargo means goods carried on a ship aircraft or motor vehicle 
very good when you say cargo those are the things that are carried on a ship it can be clothes it can be uh, raw materials for other things it can be animals it can sometimes be plastic right or wood or furniture okay anything what do you mean by a burden a load typically a heavy one yes burden now sometimes burden is referred to a feeling it's a it's a burden to my head now imagine there is a child who doesn't learn in the class now for teachers such children are a burden right because we don't know what to do why is that child not learning we feel sorry we feel sad right that's a burden so a burden can be felt by your heart as well all right now we are moving on to the exercise c we have a few names of flowers given with jumbled letters let's see who can find what is the first one children rose how do you pronounce it rose not how to spell i i asked how do you pronounce it rose this s gives you a z sound like the zoo right rose the next one now get ready what is this flower who can tell me this one very good poppy what color are poppies children red poppy right okay see what is this one tulip very good what color are tulips they come in different colors very good what sort of different colors children do they come in black yes white pink yellow red etc oh my tulip is pink okay the next one what is this one lotus very good what color what color is the lotus yes kind of purplish right yes okay lotus yes and what is this one jasmine jasmine very good what color are the jasmines children why do you have yellow jasmines no jasmines are only white there are different types of jasmines but they are all white what's the last one that's a rose no okay what is this one so what is the last one here now you have a clue it says this one starts with m so what is the flower we can see these flowers uh, very much in sri lanka wild widely grown i will tell you a clue farmers grow these flowers uh, in the middle of their cultivations as a uh, as a, a pest repellent the little the little insects they don't come when you have these flowers very strong smell marigold very good you finally found it <laughs> marigold yes this is a strong pest repellent 
Okay. The next one. Now we are moving on to exercise C number 3. Find the odd one out in each list. Brook, stream, dam, river, rivulet. Why is dam the odd man? Why? Why do you say that is the odd one? Why? If you say dam, let's say it's correct. Why do you say so? You should know the justification. No. Now children, these, these things, brook, streams, uh, rivers and uh, rivulets, are these man-made irrigation? Oh, natural ones. Natural ones. Now dam is a thing that is made by men. Now one of you asked me, is it like a waterfall? Yes, when you open, it's like that. Now I will show you a dam. Okay, let's go to the next one. Merry, happy, joyful, cheerful, cheerful. Cheerful, correct. Why? That is a word related to sadness. Very good. When are you tearful? When you are sad. All the other words are happy words. This one is a sad word. Next one. Noise, silence, sound, racket, din. What, what is din? Quickly check in the dictionary and tell me. What do you mean by din? Easy to find. Din. Very good. It's a loud and unpleasant noise. Ah, now let's remember din is a noise. Okay. So what is the odd one? Racket. Ah, okay. Now you think this is the answer. Okay. Now tell me what is the meaning of a racket? No, I'm, I'm asking what is the meaning of a racket. Some of you say it's a uh, badminton racket. Okay. Very good. Uh, the racket is, one, one uh, meaning is, it's a loud noise. Now we have a word here, noise. Okay, it's noisy all the time. Sound, that is also noise. Racket, a loud noise. Yes, it's a noise. Din, that's again loud noise. So what is the odd man out here? Silence. When you're silent, do you hear any sound? No. Okay, next one. Cherry, mango, plum, banana, peach. If you say plum, why? Okay, some of you say mango. Why? Peach. Okay, why? Why peach? Sorry? Plum is a fruit. Yes, all of these are fruits. All right. Among these fruits, what's the odd one? All are fruits.
Now, what is the base? Why, why do you say that is the odd man? What is the base? Ah, yes. Now, four of these are round fruits. One is a long fruit. What is a long fruit? Banana. Now, if you think color-wise, cherries are, what color? Cherries are red. Mangoes can be green, yellow, orange, sometimes even pink, right? Plums. Again, red kind of purple or can be yellow now peaches uh, again like orangish brownish yes so can you really base this on the color because they have multi colors we can't think about uh, the color here we just have to think about the shape these four are round shaped and the banana is long. Okay, now we go to exercise D. Find out how to make a paper boat. Will it float? Explain to a friend how you made it. Uh -huh. so, yeah, you have made one just now. Okay, very nice. Now, now, since you have made, oh, we have two paper boats. Very good. Can you explain how to do that? Now, that's the challenge. We need to explain. Now, uncle made a paper boat just to show you. Let's see. Now, children, let's see how to make a paper boat. First, you need to take a sheet of paper and fold it in half. Then unfold the paper, rotate it 90 degrees and fold it in half again. Flip the paper so that the fold opens towards you. Bring the bottom of the paper up to fold it against both sides. Take the bottom corners and fold them in. Make a triangle into a square. Fold up the bottom flaps. Construct the triangle into a square again. Pull out the triangles on the side of the square. Float your boat anywhere you like.
Okay, well done, children. We took five minutes and we made a lot of uh, paper bows. Now you understood how to make one, right? And uh, you answer my question. Will it float? Do you think your paper boat will float? Why? Why do you think it will not float? So didn't you make it correctly? It, no. Uh, for that put there, you can just do like this. Now, if this is the boat, you turn it down, right? And from here, you can you can expand the down and then try to make it stand. Then it will float. Now your boat will float. You have to make it properly. It, yeah, when you turn, yeah, when you turn down. It should look like a hollow, a hole here. Now your boats will float. Very good. Now you can even balance them on a surface. Yes, exactly. Very good. Now they will definitely float. Now, explain. Very good. Now I think you all did this. Explain to a friend how you made it. Now, number two. Write a list of instructions on how to make a paper boat. Number the steps and make each instruction clear and to the point. Shall we start instructions children? Let's write a topic how to make a paper boat. Now you are going to write instructions one by one. What do we have to do first? Fold a sheet of paper in half. Let's read. What is the second one? Unfold the paper, rotate it 90 degrees and fold it in half again. And then flip the paper so that the fold opens towards you. Bring, number four. Bring the bottom of the paper up to fold it against both sides. Step number five, take the bottom corners and fold them in. Number six, make the triangle into a square. Now we did all these steps, right? Number seven, fold up the bottom flaps. Number eight, Construct the triangle into a square again. Then instruction number nine. Pull out the triangles on the sides of the square. That is the final step. Now you have your boat. Now before that children you said your boats would not float. Because you couldn't even make them stand on your desk. So before this. After uh, instruction number 9, after pulling out the triangles on the sides, what do you do? You turn the boat downwards and make a hollow here. Then it will balance. Like this. And after that, you can float your boat anywhere you like. Be it a tub of water, be it a bucket of water, be it a stream, be it just your garden after rain. Right? You can float anywhere you like. Now I can see some children have made more than 20 paper boats in 5 minutes. We had fun making them. Right? Some of you wrote all your details there because you are going to float it somewhere. Right? Just like Rabindranath Tagore, right? The one who wrote the poem. He wrote, I want a a person, someone from a strange land to know my name, to know where I live and I'd like them to 
know my details very good some of you have made colorful ones beautiful ones very good <laughs> some of you are still making very good i'm very sure you enjoyed this experience children it was really fun so with that we have finished chapter number five paper boats well done